Welcome to the Building Adventures of 2011. This year we were able to demonstrate the beginnings of significant CEB construction, a 4,000 square foot workshop and 10 living units to make the much needed infrastructure upgrades for open product development at Factory Farm. As of today the roof is on a workshop and the perimeter wall and some columns are up. The roof frame is up for HabLab and that is almost complete. We have a couple of months still before we can move in to HabLab we are already doing further prototyping in the workshop. In this video, I would like to focus on the lessons learned regarding the practical and ergonomic aspects of CEB construction for any of you who would like to repeat these techniques. So why use CEB? First of all, CEB construction is very environmentally friendly. Literally, one builds with the dirt beneath their feet. Any earth with about 30% clay content is compressed to make bricks. Since most places worldwide have such earth, CEB construction is possible in most places around the world. Walls, floors, and even vaulted roofs can be made using the technique, and straight earth may be used if the bricks are protected from moisture. In short, we found the use of CEBs very satisfying. We were able to lay beautiful walls and columns from the dirt beneath our feet at a cost of two cents per brick when fuel only is considered. This doesn't consider labor, under the assumption of DIY construction, and this cost also does not include equipment, but with the lifetime design equipment that we're developing, we are confident that this will be negligible, as we will document fully in due course. What are our main learnings from these construction adventures? Two important points need to be kept in mind for anyone trying to replicate this. One is that the huge earth-moving capacity is required to do successful effective building and two the great disadvantage is the susceptibility of the bricks to water damage fortunately both of these issues are solvable in our construction the soil pulverizer proved itself capable of handling the necessary soil throughput requirements on the water issue since we are building at an unfavorable and rainy time we ended up putting up the roof first and then building the CB walls in our area where rain is common, this is indeed the preferred route for building a structure. Moreover, bricks can be stabilized with 5% cement to make them waterproof. Now the materials. During this year's construction, we baled hay from our land to generate a total of about 900 square bales for insulation. Then we pressed 17,000 bricks. We put them on pallets so we could focus on pressing all bricks first, then laying later. We moved the bricks to storage and put them under cover from the rain, after dark on every day of pressing. We hope to use the sawmill for lumber production, but the sawmill is now only 75% complete. And we also tried pressing stabilized lime bricks, or DIY cinder block equivalent, bricks made from finely crushed limestone stabilized with cement. We mixed with a pulverizer and pressed a dozen samples with satisfactory results. For larger production, we tested the cement mixer, but was not particularly effective at mixing the reject lime. It needs some modifications, so we will save the full DIY cinder block production for next year. The brick rollers worked well to help in materials handling. At most, we pressed 1,900 of the 30 pound bricks in one eight hour day with one person driving the saw pulverizer and one person stacking bricks on pallets. We used only half the machine power, or 27 horsepower, as bridging of wet soil in the hopper was an issue and it prevented faster production. The workflow and the materials flow has to be perfected for us to use 54 horse, the rated power for the machine. And we will also try the variable displacement pump to increase brick production while decreasing power requirements. As reported before in a blog post on the first saw pulverizer prototype, the saw pulverizer really did annihilate the saw handling limits. Recall that saw handling ability is the key to effective construction. A full pulverizer bucket could be filled and taken to the CB press in as little as 30 seconds. On some days, we actually had two machines pressing at four bricks per minute. The saw pulverizer had no problem keeping up with this. on brick quality. Compressive strength testing results from last year show 700 psi compressive strength for unstabilized bricks and 1100 psi for stabilized ones. 
Translated, that means that a one by one foot brick area or wall can support up to the limit of a hundred thousand pounds of weight. The soil here, late in the season, was not easy to work with. It took days for it to dry and was too clay in our particular building location. We added crushed limestone to amend it. Starting in full production in mid-October, we could press bricks only about half the time until December when we finished because the soil simply never dried up enough to, to press good bricks. Good bricks come about when you could see dust in the soil that you're working with. Otherwise, they are too pliable after pressed and they can be bent and deformed easily due to the water content. We had one batch of bricks that had so much water in it that after a frost, a bunch of bricks simply disintegrated because of internal freezing. Here are the main points in our construction technique. First, when pressing bricks, there's always some variation in the height. The two sides of the chamber are fixed, 6 by 12, but depending on the cloudiness, moisture content, and exact composition of the soil, the bricks will compact to a slightly different height, typically 5 to 6 inches. Accommodating this height difference would require soil slurry to correct the unevenness. This requires lots of material and work. To address this, the bricks are laid on a side where the height of each brick is exactly 6 inches. We use the Dutch bond brick laying pattern. There are lengthwise bricks in this pattern with a tying brick in the middle. This allowed us to use imperfect bricks by placing any imperfect or chipped sides on the inside not visible from the outside. Then we could put electrical wiring inside the double layer, which is quite convenient. We cross tie the wall with a 12 inch brick length. For the workshop, the wall is 12 inches wide and uninsulated. For HabLab, we plan on using a two foot wide wall, same Dutch bond pattern, but with 12 inches of straw bale insulation in the middle and cross ties made of plywood. We will use straw bale insulation also in a HabLab roof. The insulation detail for the foundation features horizontal insulation underground four feet out from the house. This is an effective but rarely used technique. To address the problem of rainy weather, we put the roof up first in the workshop. We used calm anchors in concrete with 2x4 lumbers screwed together to the correct height so the roof can go on. Then we are building the CB columns right around the posts with hollow columns of only 8 bricks per layer. We will leave the post in place after the columns are up. Regardless of weather right now, we can build under the roof to complete the structure. The stem wall of CB is already up in a workshop and we are just getting the roof up on the hab lab. One amazing feature of CB construction is that the mortar for the bricks can be plain water and that this actually works very well. When a brick surface is wetted, it dissolves the superficial clay layer, so when two bricks are wetted, they bond to each other. We start out thinking that large amounts of soil slurry, or soil mixed well with a lot of water, would be necessary to do the construction, as the slurry would also help even out courses if they were not straight like a regular brick mason uses varying amounts of mortar to make sure their courses are level. After we recruited a local CEB builder, yes, we have one of the few in the country about 25 miles from us, we found that using mortar is unnecessary. Since the bricks are uniform in height to within maybe 1 32nd of an inch, plain water is sufficient to bond bricks and the courses do not go out of level. We learned a second amazing point, that the above technique works even in sub-zero weather. We simply used RV antifreeze in sufficient quantities to prevent the water from freezing and the bricks could still bond to one another. For those of you in Alaska or Siberia there is hope. So in summary, these are only the initial though positive results and the housing is yet to be completed. We will document the critical techniques in depth once we have more of the hab lab built. We look forward to refining these techniques in the construction of a 400 square foot demo house showcasing all these methods as in next year's Build Naturally workshop. We will use 100% open source equipment by then including the bulldozer, cement mixer, well drilling rig and backhoe. CB straw, lumber, DIY cinder block, super insulation and CB floors will be part of the demo structure not to mention the gasifier burner and renewable energy via solar concentrator and pelletized biomass. For right now, the CB press pulverizer power unit are in good shape. 
then we are just shaking down the tractor seriously, and we look forward to a robust solution after extensive testing starting in January. So get involved in this and help us bring these options to the rest of the world. Thanks a lot.